Hello, and welcome to Chapter 10 Homework. Hope everything's been going great with y'all. As we move forward um, in our course, and we're dealing with now hypothesis testing. Yeah. Dealing with testing of our statistics. Yeah. So starting off with problem one, we're going to have a sample of 37 observations is selected for a normal population. The sample mean is 60, and the population standard deviation is 8. Conduct the following test of hypothesis using a 0 0.10 significant level. Now again, your numbers may be a little bit different than mine. That's fine. But we're going to go through the process of handling these problems, and hopefully it helps you all out. Again, if the problem does have a hint button, like it has over here, it also will give a video by McGraw-Hill of how to solve the problem. A little uh, tick for tat right there. Okay, so the biggest thing is, is we're going to always ask, if it's going to be one tail or two tail. Now, most of these problems you're going to hit are probably going to be one tail. But in order to know if it's two tail, it's going to have that equal sign. Just the equal sign, no greater or less than. So since it has equal and not equal, this is considered a two tail. So a two tail test there. That means for our Null, which is, uh, again, our hypothesis uh, 0, or H0, it's going to fall in between our two extreme numbers, our Z numbers as they are, since it's going to be 1.645. Remember, since we're looking at a 10% uh, significant level, we have to divide that by 2 and then locate um, the Z value, all that, which we'll do in later problems, mostly because it's already given us the numbers, so there's no sense of going with question 1. It's okay. We rock on. We keep going. Okay? So, if our null has to fall in between the two, we don't reject it. We only reject it if it's on the outside. Again, you can hit check my work. That's fine. So only if Z value is less than our negative 1.645 or greater than our positive 1.645. So in our little graph itself, it has to fall in the tails. Alright, next, the more fun part, calculations, math, we love math, we love math, <laughs> and I'm going to keep, uh, I think it worked a little bit better showing the formula again through uh, the PowerPoint, so let me show you the formula again, so we'll zoom it up, zoom, 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 oh, 200, there we go. So there's our formula for when we know the standard population or standard deviation. Uh, once we know it, we use the Z value. Remember, if we don't know it, the good old-fashioned T value comes. Yeah, T. Of course, it's X bar, which is our sample, minus mu divided by the standard deviation divided by square root of the po sample population. Okay, so for this, we know mu is equal to 61. Our sample mean is 60. So this is what we're going to tell us. We're going to have a negative. <laughs> okay, so calculator. How do we basically put this stuff in? Well, because the formula is kind of like this. 
you really need to know this bottom first. Really helps out on that. But, I mean, we can actually put this in the calculator with all parentheses. It works. Either way, it's fine and dandy. So, whoops. So let me put everything so you can see the formula. Wow, it's going crazy. All right. So, top part. We're going to put our sample mean, which is 60. Minus 61, which is our hypothesis, our mu, which is right there. Okay, we'll put that in parentheses and divide by, in parentheses again, our standard deviation of 8 divided by our sample size, which is 37. Right there. I have to keep shifting everything. <laughs> and of course with this calc this calculator. You have to input that first and then hit the square root. Close parentheses and hit enter. So it looks like we have a negative 0.76 round to the nearest end and roll. Negative point uh, zero point seven six two decimal places. Check. Make sure we're still on the right path, and we are. Okay. So biggest thing with the test statistic, know the formulas. Okay. Use the PowerPoint. Write it down if you have to. Have that little piece of paper. Okay. Okay, so we know it's negative 0.76. What we have to have is it's lesser than negative 1.645. We know on the spectrum that that's a closer to zero. So no, it's actually greater. So when it asks you regarding null, are we going to reject or fail? We actually failed to reject it this time. Okay. Could your problem actually have it where you reject? Yes. Numbers change. All right. P value. The fun part. So for us to find what p-value is. Okay, we need to look up our z-value. Okay, again, two decimal places, final answer is four decimal places. So they're basically going off of this, part C. Okay, so we're going to go look at our table. which I accidentally click. There's our table. This is on t-test. We don't need a t-test. We need a normal curve. So always go to b.3 for z-value. And now we get to look for our famous uh, part c, which for me, again, is negative 0.76. So there's my point seven. And let's see six. And it looks like it falls right here. So I'm gonna highlight that just to make sure. Okay. Point seven six. Yep. So mine is point two seven six four. But that's not all that we do. For our p-value, we need our calculator. So to calculate p-value, we're going to take, since we're dealing with basically one half 
of the standard curve. We're going to take 0.5 minus 0.2764, which is 0.2236, and multiply it by 2, because we're dealing with the two-tail. So 0.4472. we go there's our p-value okay so again you have to find out what is your z-value off the chart so you have to look it up through the chart what you got on C so you could have two point something you could have one point what I mean you just gotta find it on the chart take that number subtract it from 0.5 half of our chart since it's only deal was a half and then times it by two okay so basically this is going to tell me I have a four oh turn the question so in our interpretation this actually says I have a 44.72 percent chance of finding z value this large by sampling error. Okay, so I have a huge sample error. So it's not perfect for me. It could be better for y'all. Who knows? The lower the chance is, the easier the sample error. I mean, the lower the chance is, the less of an error you have. For me, as you can see, I have a 44. I almost got 50% chance that I have a sampling error when null is true. Okay. I mean, it happens. Okay, we're just trying to get the basics going. Okay, guys? So let's try number two. All right. So a recent national survey found that high school students watch an average of 7.4 movies per month with a population standard deviation of 0.9. The distribution of number of movies watched per month follows the normal distribution. A random sample of 34 college students revealed that the mean number of movies watched last month was 6.9 at the 0 0.05 significant level, can we conclude that college students watch fewer movies a month than high school students? This sounds like one of those PowerPoint ones. I can always sense it because I remember all those college students and high school students movie watching. Now, so with this, if we're looking at a multiple choice test and we want to state the null, first thing is, is that we do not have a two tail. There is no two tail here because we have fewer movies a month than high school students. Okay? So that immediately tells me it's a one tail. So that removes this one right here that has equal and not equal. This also removes how the second one. Because only null will have the equal sign when it's one tail. Okay? So, that means we're in between these two. And we want to know if our uh, college students are fewer than high school. So, if high schools watch 7.4, we want something less. That's always going to be our alternative. So it should be the first one. Okay. Remember, the question itself will always be our alternative hypothesis. Okay. Our alternate uh, hypothesis there. It always is. So our null has to be that our college students actually watch more than high school or equal to high school. So, 
Again, now we got to state the decision. Because this is a one tail, you can see how Z is a little bit different. Now, we want to make sure it is definitely less than um, our hypothesis. So, this gives us a few things. We're going to look at H0. It's always null. We do not reject the alternative. So, that means we either have greater, Z is greater than negative 1.645, or Z is less than negative 1.645. Again, it helped us with a significant level. It's all good. The only one that's less than is this bottom one. Again, if it's greater than, that means it's proving our uh, null. Okay. So basically, if it falls in the tail, no good. We're going to reject are null. So again, decision rules only state with null. H0 does not deal with anything with the alternative in H1. Okay. Now it's time to compute the test statistics. Alright, using the same formula, that's formula right here. Boom! Boom, we go to dynamite. Yes. We're going to take our same numbers up here. And we're going to calculate. Calculate. So again, parentheses. We're going to take our sample, which is 6.9 minus mu, which is 7.4. Okay. Divide it by our standard deviation that is known, which is um, 0 0.9 divided by our sample size square root. Okay, so it was 34, hit our square root, close our parentheses, and hit enter. So I have a negative 3.23. If I round it up, since I have a 9, it's going to be negative 3.24. Always got to watch out for those rounding aspects. Okay. And notice how I'm always checking my work after each section. Reason why, again, it flows. All right. Now, question is... What's our decision? Well, since we said we're going to reject if Z is less than negative 1.645. Negatives, the higher the number, the lower it is on our timeline. Which this would say it's indeed less than negative 1.645. So for D, we're going to reject. It follows our decision rule of rejecting the null, so we must reject. P-value time. So let's remove the formula. <laughs> Alright. So, for our P-value. We're going to again take our Z. Table, table, table. Where's our table? There it is. Okay. So we have 3.24. So. Which we may actually run into a little trouble. No, 
Three point. Oh, looks like the book. Let's see if they got this one. Okay, that is not nice. So, let's see if we can find the Z table. Okay, there we go. There's a Z table. Let's see. We are looking at negative 3.24. Alright, so here it is. Negative 3.24. Okay, since we're dealing with uh, a one tail, this is our probability. This is our p value 0.0006. It's a little bit different between a two and a, a one tail. Okay. Okay. I just wish the game <laughs> the book actually had the Z table that gave it. So that's a little tricky. So if it's anything beyond three, uh, you're gonna have to really look into um this one actually does negative and positive, which is kind of awesome. I will say that because then we don't have to subtract. If we use the positive, we would have to subtract and it will still end up coming out closely to the same. So that's awesome. I would take a screenshot of this. If you're watching the video, pause, take a screenshot or something, and have this as your backup for your negatives. All right. Anyway, yeah, that was kind of mean not to have that in our book uh, chart. But that's how it goes. Every now and then we have to go look up other items. Okay. Question three. Question three is going to deal with Tista. Um, uh, t testing. Sorry. All of a sudden it's like, yay. All right. So we do have the following hypothesis. We have null with mu less than or equal to 10. And the alternative is going to be greater than 10. So a random sample of 10 observations is selected from a normal population. The sample mean was 19 and the sample standard deviation is 3.4. Using the 0 0.05 significant level, state the decision rule. Alright. So, biggest thing that we have to do when it's a T value, we got to look up the T chart. So, hopefully it's on the T chart from the books. Alright. I think it is. It, it's... That was really odd. I don't think they prepared that. All right. So we're going to look at 0 0.05 level of significance for a single tail. Okay. Again, how do I know between one and two tail? Our hypothesis are less than or greater than. They're not equal signs. It's always one tail. Okay. You're like going, oh my god, he keeps repeating himself like that. It's like, yeah, I do. The more times you get repetitive, the better off you go and remember. Alright. So we have a sample size of 10. Remember, for degrees of freedom, we take the sample size and minus 1. 
So for us, that means our, sound, our degrees of freedom is 9. Okay? 10 minus 1 equals 9. And this is the second column. So this states that we should be at 1.833. Okay, so 1.833, whoa, extra three somehow got added in, I'm check, and there you go, there's where you're finding your t-value. Remember, always got to find that t-value. Next, we're going to compute the value of the test statistic. Again, how do we do that? Well, let's go look up PowerPoint. Oh, a little bit too big. T, T, formula. It's a little bit easier when it's not in mega form. So there's our T, there's our Z. Boom. So here we go. There's our test. Now zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay. So basically the same way. The only difference that we have now, besides it being T value, is our sample standard deviation, is where our standard deviation was for the population. Because we don't know it, we don't know the population. So, calculator, we're going to take the sample mean, which was 19, oh, don't forget your parentheses, 19 minus our mu, which happens to be 10 from our hypothesis, divided by, again, in parentheses, our Sample standard deviation of 3.4 divided by, again, our sample size. That must be 10 with the square root. Close parentheses and hit enter or equal. And we come out to 8.37. One if it's to three. Yeah, three. So 8.371, check, there's our answer, there you go. So what is your decision to the null? Okay, so since this is a drop down, first off, all null says, our, our T, sorry, our T says reject null if T is greater than 1.833. Our test statistic is 8.371. So, we're going to reject. Now, again, yours, you may not reject. So, that's what the interpretation is. We're taking our decision rule. My decision rule is to reject if it's greater than 1.833. Or is greater, so I have to reject. Okay. This, there is. Sure, that should be sufficient evidence to conclude that the population mean is greater Check. 
Now, if somehow you do not reject, then there's insufficient evidence to show that the mean is greater. Just depends on which way it ends up going. So that's three. Hopefully you are still with me. Because let's move to four. And again, remember, if they start repeating themselves, it's a less likely chance, probability here, that I'm going to go over the problem. Because again, I need to test your skills to see how well you can solve these problems. All right? Awesome. All right. The Rocky Mountain District Sales Manager of Wrath Publishing Incorporated, a college textbook published company, claims that the sales representatives make an average of 36 sales calls per week on professors. Several reps say that estimate is too low. Okay. To investigate, a random sample of 40 sales representatives revealed that the mean number of calls made last week was 43. The standard deviation of the sample is 6.4. Using the 0 0.05 significant level, can we conclude that the mean number of calls per sales person uh, per week is more than 36? Again, here we go. How do I know that it's going to be T value or Z value? Real quick is that it states the standard deviation of the sample is 6.4. That's a T. Okay. It would actually be Z if I know that this was the population standard deviation. So for this, we gotta take our fancy chart. Again, we're using 0.05. So 0 0.05, this time our sample size is 40. Since it's 40, we're going to have to minus by 1 to make it to 39. And so what happens? I do have it. Yay! So my T statistic for this one is going to be 1.685. Oh, compute the value. <laughs> I just went ahead. Like, that's my bad. We need to compute, not just find what T, T value is. That's what happens when you went from one problem to the next. Sometimes you just run into it. So let's compute. Sorry. We'll come back later to that decision. <laughs> so calculator. Again, we take the sample of how many calls. Happens to be 43 minus 36 or mu. Divided by, in parentheses, our uh, sample deviation of 6.4. Divided by, again, since I'm using this uh, calculator, we take our uh, total ram uh, random sample of 40. Uh, that's our... Again, sales representatives, and we need to square root that. Okay. Fortunately, the only way to enter into the calculator, as you've been seeing, is I have to put the number in first and then square root. I think some graphic calculators you do square root and then you put a number. It's okay as long as you got the formula correct. Hit enter. We're at 6.917. Okay, making sure. There we go. Sorry, I went and looked for the T statistic before I actually looked at uh, that they only want the value. Again, we need that for our decision. 
Okay. So, our decision rule is that we're going to reject the null, since this is again one tail, if it is greater than our 1.685. Again, I'm looking at 6.917. So I will reject and this would probably mean that the mean call number is going to be greater. Okay. Presently that's it for this problem. <laughs> I was expecting more. I thought it would be more uh, spread out like the previous one. So there are missing some steps that you have to remember to do in order to make your decision correctly. Okay. All right, question five. Question five seems like it's gonna be fun. Woo! Okay. I can already <laughs> sense it. So the amount of water consumed each day by a healthy adult follows a normal distribution with a mean of 1.46. Okay. A health campaign promotes the consumption of at least 2 liters per day. A sample of 10 adults after the campaign shows the following consumption is in liters, so forth and so on. Calculate and interpret the p-value. Okay. This sounds so much fun, so let's get into it. Okay. So the biggest thing is, do I know my population standard deviation? And everybody goes, no, you do not. So that means this is a t-value. We already know it's t-value because, again, we do not have the standard deviation. That is known to us. It is unknown, so we got to use the sample. Now, for our null in an alternative hypothesis, remember this is always mu, this is our mean that we know for the population, which is 1.46 for me. And there we go. Okay. So that makes life a little bit easier. That's our hypothesis that we're going to have. Same number. Never different numbers. Okay. Next, we're going to state the decision rule for our significant level. So let's find our T value. So calculate. We need our chart. We know it's 0 0.05. And our sample size was 10, so 10 minus 1 is going to be 9. I think we've already done this. Yep, right there, 1.833. Again, check, just to make sure I put in the right number again. Now it says we need to compute the value of our test statistic. Problem is, we're missing one of those items. And that is standard deviation. Now let's see, I don't think I have. They already saved like before. Yeah, that's fine. So let's go ahead and pull up our exact old data. We can download or we can manually input. It's only 10 numbers. It is not uh, overly aggressive. Make sure you hit enable editing. Just going to insert one because that just messes with me. Okay, let's find the sum. Formulas, auto sum. And we know the mean equals two.
our number divided by 10, which is 1.68. I think our problem actually states that. Let's see. And no, it does not. So it's okay. Actually, one of them is 1.68. It's funny. I don't know why it's funny, but it's funny. All right. So remember, first part, x minus x bar, which is basically our mean. So all these will equal to that. Minus 1.68. And all the way down. And again, if I somehow sum this, It doesn't always mean that it's going to end up being zero. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, next, again, we need to find our standard deviation, which is basically taking x minus x bar, and we're going to square it. Square. Okay, so. Formula wise equals this times this. Boom. And just use the formula. Okay. Next, we sum it up. Okay. So we take that sum. Variance for a sample size is going to equal to that divided by uh, our sample size, which is 10 minus 1. So it's going to be 9. And then standard deviation. It's going to equal to the square root of that. So formulas, mass, square root of our variance. So it's like 0 0.21 uh, 7. So we may have rounding issues. I can already sense this because it's so many decimals. Whoop. Okay. So let's see how it goes out. Okay. So our test statistic. We're going to take calculator. We're going to take our mean, 1.68, minus mu, which is 1.46. And yes, I didn't do the division like I usually do, or the parentheses, sorry. So we're going to divide it by, again, our standard According to this is 0.217 divided by 10 square root and hit enter. Okay. So it is 3.205. Now I'm just afraid that rounding has toned so much over and it may actually report it wrong, which it does. Okay, so if you get to this point and it does go a little bit haywire,
Which it looks like it is doing so. Because I wonder. Yeah. No. So it looks like it will end up getting a little bit off on its uh, its rounding. That is an unfortunate thing. So do this. If it does show that it's not entirely correct right here for this one because it's question five and we're dealing with a lot of rounding, as long as... Um, Email me and send me that you actually did calculate the standard deviation. And we'll be able to um, move on from that. Okay. Okay. So, when we deal with this also, sometimes if it is showing that it's wrong, try to actually put in the whole number. Like two one two seven two five six. So if I actually did uh, one, let's do it the classic way. One point six eight minus one point four six divided by now in parentheses point two one seven two five six divided by again our ten. Which was our sample size, square root, close parentheses. I come out to 3.202, and that is actually the correct answer. Okay. Again, slight rounding. So sometimes that works. It's all rounding issue. But since you're watching this video, you want to know an easier way to find the standard deviation? It's like, yeah, of course. Okay. So, let's go to our formulas. More functions. Statistical. And you're going to look for, all the way down here, and you see these STDEV. If we highlight, it actually says standard deviation based on a sample. Okay, so if I click on that, it's gonna pop up this bar, and then all I need to do is highlight my numbers from the table. What well, happens to be this, and hit OK, and boom, same number. This is just a long way. I like this way because it breaks it down, so you can actually see how it works, but you can actually calculate standard deviation like so. Okay. So again, same answer. That's just using the formula now. Using Excel to help speed up the process. So I may actually use that next time. Let's see. Alright. So again, our decision was reject H null. If t is greater than 1.833, it is 3.202. So back to return. We can conclude that we're going to reject. Again, it's higher. And conclude that wrong water consumption has actually increased. Check. Go. Now it's time to estimate the p-value. Alright. So with that being said, we're sitting at 3.202 as our uh, test statistic. All right, so estimating the p-value, what do I need that t-chart? What we're going to do 
on our t-chart is we're going to find our little t-statistic, but we got to make sure we're in the same row. So since we're at 10, remember degrees of freedom is 10 minus uh, 1, so it's 9. We're going to find the closest one to us, which is going to be the 3.250. Since it's a one tail, it means we're going to look at 0 0.0050 as our estimated p value. Hit check my work, and there you go. Now, again, you can use hint. Um, Hint will probably give you more of an Excel basis. I think so. I think especially with this one since it's dealing with Excel. But those are some of the basics. Okay. Next. Uh, question six. According to the Census Bureau, 3.39 people reside in a typical American household. A sample of 26 households in Arizona retirement communities show a mean number of residents per household was 2.80. The standard deviation of the sample was 1.10 and a 0 0.10 significant level. It is reasonable to conclude the mean number of residents in the retirement community household is less than 3.39 people or persons. Okay, right. first off, again, we're looking at T value. Again, the reason why is that this is the sample deviate, the standard deviation of this sample. Okay. So from what I am seeing here, this is all items that we've already gone through. We've already stated of how to handle a T value. Okay, T statistic. So I think this later half of the homework is mostly going to be a little bit more closer to you. Okay, we're going to test to see if there's anything else here. But yes, we've already went through of how to calculate and finding. Okay, so seven, seven is using Excel data. Set this time, we're doing. A two tail. So the only difference between this and the two tail actually is going to be p value. Remember p value. What do I actually have between? So the only difference here between the last one, the one that we just did with the chart, and this one is going to be basically p-value. A little bit of differences right here. So let's go ahead and we're going to probably mosey right through this. So, watch corporation of Switzerland claims that uh, its watches on average will gain nor lose time during the week. A sample of 18 watches provided the following gains plus or minus losses per second. So, since they claim that they will have no gain or loss, we're going to have zero zero okay because what now we're going to be looking if there is so using the excel data oh okay there we go all right we need to also figure out what is the decision rule so, decision rule for this, 0 0.01, significant level, calculator, nope, 
we need our table. 0 0.01 of a two test. Be careful of that. Okay, again, this is a two test. One, because it's done with equal. I'll have to remove this so that you don't get confused. There we go. 0 0.01 right there. Then again, our sample size is 18. So 18 minus 1 means degrees of freedom will fall under 17. 17. So we're dealing with 2.898. Okay, so with that, it means we get 2.898, so it cannot be greater than this. And it cannot be less than the negative, because we're doing the two tails. Check. Okay. Compute the value of the t-statistic. Now here's the fun part. Here we go. We're going to do it a little bit quicker way. So enable editing. Because the only thing that we really need from this chart for us for these purposes is standard deviation. So we need the formula for standard deviation of a sample size. Remember, this is sample. So you can go all the way down and then stdv.s. Click, highlight, there we go, and hit OK. So our standard deviation is 0 0.30734. Okay. A little bit of fun right there. Now, we also do need to compute the mean. We have to have the sample mean. So sorry. Formula, auto sum, and take equal nut, divide by 18. So there is our sample mean. Okay. So again, we gotta compute our test statistic. Which calculator will state this. Negative point one eight three nine. Clear. There we go. Point eight three nine minus zero. <laughs> it's still negative point eight three nine. Either way, it's negative eight point three nine divided by in parentheses again our standard. I'm going to use the whole number divided by our sample size in square root form. So we get a negative 2.53, yeah, three decimal places. So calculator had negative 2.539. We got to round up. Okay, check. And there we go. All right, so. Using Excel, that saved us a bunch of time right there knowing that formula. It's always something new. All right. So, the question is, do we reject the null or do we accept it? Where our rule was, if it's less than 
our negative of negative 2.898, we would reject. This is actually uh, greater than. It's closer to zero. So we do not reject. Okay. So that means that the sample data indicated that the mean gain or loss time from zero is almost not different. Okay. So they're pretty much on the ball. It is so uh, minuscule that it is not, there is no difference. All right, turn to question. Now it's going to ask, what is the p-value? So two, negative 2.539, taking our chart right here. 2.539 is closest to here. Highlight, highlight blue which happens to be 0 0.02. Ooh, and then it gives us even more fun. So we're not going, we're going to end up being in between. So chart, we're at 2.567, does it fall in? falls into the ladder. So it looks like it's going to be in 0 0.05 and 0 0.02. And there we go. There's question seven. So six, I have faith that y'all can do on your own. We've already talked about many times of how to do it. And again, we just went over how to compute T-statistic, this time with a two-tail. Next, uh, this is already, you can see if this is one or two tail. This looks like another two tail with the T statistic. Okay, so again, we just went over that. Uh, nine is already a one tail. So we've been over one tail with the T statistic. And now that you know that standard deviation formula, that you can easily calculate that, the only two things that we need to pull from the Excel data for our sake right now is, again, uh, the average, the, the mean. Sorry, all of a sudden uh, got, went away. And um, the standard deviation. Okay, just be careful of these levels of significance, okay? And then question 10. He's just asking for what is the decision rule? So reject null uh, mu is greater than or equal to 7.5 when the test statistic is Basically, it should be greater than okay. So, that number 10 is a little bit different, okay. All right, so number 10. Because I, I was thinking, like, y'all, it's like. Why are they asking here? So they give this. So we have to have to compute test statistic. Sorry. So this is either Z or T. So let's see which one it is. A national grocer magazine. The typical shopper spends 7.5 minutes in line 
waiting to check out. A sample of 25 shoppers at the local Farmer's Jack showed a mean of 6.5 and a standard deviation of 2.2. Okay, so that immediately tells me this is a T value. Because again, standard deviation is based on the sample with a 0 0.05 significant level. So we're looking at 25, so that's 24. So let's take our chart. And we have 0 0.05. And since we're using less than, that does tell us it's a one tail. You can also see it right here. So 24, 1.711. Huh. This is actually interesting in what they're asking for. So it's going to be less than. Again, sometimes we're going to have to play for it. So less than negative 1.71. There we go. Okay, that one's a little bit tricky right there. <laughs> I will have to say that. That decision rule kind of bucks a little bit of our trends. But, okay. So this one's going to be less than negative 1.711. Seems about right when they put negative right there. Okay. All right, so next we just compute our test statistic with this one. I'm just going to go ahead and go through it all. So calculator, we take, again, R time, parentheses, 6.5 minus 7.5 divided by our sample standard deviation of 2.2 .2 divided by, again, the square root of our sample size, which is 25. So negative check make sure I enter it correctly it is in all right so there's our test statistic we've already done t uh, a lot and basically they want to know if we reject okay so now I get why I was a little bit confused here that this is actually the hypothesis we are doing the alternative here so when do we reject this whole thing. So since the test statistic is uh, less than, we're going to reject. Okay, and that's it. Ten, ten throws you off because of this part. Once you're done with this part, that's basically the same as our prior ones. So again, there's a few that I would like you to do on your own. Try and see if you can understand, since we've already went over similar problems. But again, if you don't, send me the email. I don't mind helping y'all guys out.
So let me know if you got any questions. And that is it for Chapter 10 homework. I will see y'all next time.